if the leader could do everything, then he wouldn't need a team. And obviously you've got to appreciate the different skills that everyone brings to the table in an organization. One example that springs to mind is a project we did with the Intercontinental uh, Hotel in Beijing. Uh, as part of a follow-up program to their opening three years previously, we had worked with the hotel manager to create a program that would give everyone the opportunity to be the customer and the supplier at any given time in an activity. And it was aimed primarily at the sales team and the XCOM staff. So it was giving them an opportunity to understand what their skill is and what they bring to the table, but there can be conflict with others. For example, if you're in a sales team and you're trying to up production, the production people want to have everything technically brilliant uh, so that the product can sell, but the sales team want to sell the product as quickly as possible. And sometimes that can lead to conflict. And the activity that we had was known as Bridging the Divide, where each team is responsible for building a smaller segment of a larger elevated roadway. So if you can imagine a large oval elevated roadway, each team is responsible for designing their part, but they commission a different team to actually build it for them. At the same time, they are commissioned by a different team to build for them. So at any given time, they are the customer who must get the information to the people who are building for them. And they must also receive information from their customer, uh, who in a sense, they are the supplier relationship for them, where they've got to create that part of the elevated roadway to create this huge installation. Uh, there's a lot of challenges that are kept up because obviously they're trying to promote what they want as a customer. The supplier needs to be a professional advisor. So if the customer is asking them for something that's outside of the range of scope or something that's way beyond uh, what the actual product is, then they need to educate the client uh, that that may not be the best solution. The same thing as with the supplier is trying to give the best service to your customer. And it's a very unique activity that allows you to be both uh, the customer and the supplier at the same time. And during the debrief of the experience, we find that the participants find that most valuable, that they understand their position as a salesperson, that they are very good at what they do. And sometimes because they don't understand too much in the extent of the, the work and the level that is involved by the production team to get their product technically brilliant because it is a different skill, that that in a sense leads to a little bit of a communication breakdown. With a, with a sense of humor and being aware of that and taking the leadership to actually understand how the other person in production feels and also for the production to understand how the salesperson and what their motivations are, we have a better fit in a sense, we are bridging that divide as to what is missing between the two. So uh, the next time back at work when they have a project to complete, they can literally put themselves in that person's shoes and understand that, you know, I'm very good at my sales skills, but this is an area that I'm not very good at, which is production, which is why I need your involvement, why I need you to perform. And that mix of skills promotes a very healthy respect that then helps as a team to meet the organization's goals. So it's no longer looking at what can you not provide for me, it's looking at what collective talent do you bring to the table. And with my collective talent, we, we've got a great team that really can promote this mix of skills and understanding each other's motivations to uh, delivering an excellent product for the organization.